Hello my fellow Chef Nation enthusiasts. In this video I'm going to show you two, <laughs> two knives of Yoshihiro. Yoshihiro are knives produced by Yamawaki Hamano. They also produce knives under the name Go Umanusuke Yoshihiro, named after a famous swordsmith. He was one of the three legendary swordsmiths of Japan, next to Awataguchi Toshiro Yoshimitsu and his teacher Soshu Goro Nyudo Masamune. I'm probably butchering these names, sorry about that. Soshu Goro Nyudo Masamune is considered the greatest Japanese swordsmith of all time. Yoshihiro became the most skilled student of Masamune and was reputed to make blades so fine that they were often confused with the works of his master. He was famous for mastering the Mizu Honyaki process, regarded as the most challenging blade construction, quenching and heat treatment processes. Due to his death at a young age, he produced only a limited number of blades and it is this rarity and exceptional craftsmanship of his works that make Go Yoshihiro's sword so valuable today. Throughout time his works have been highly sought after and held in the highest regard. While everyone would hear about the greatness of these blades, very few people would ever get to see them. This led to a saying in Japan, one never sees a ghost or a go. Anyway, it's nice to have a backstory like this as a company, but at the end of the day I'm not going to show you a sword, I'm going to show you knives. Knives made by people that claim to honor the spirit and tradition of these legendary swordsmiths like Yoshihiro, Masamune and Yoshimitsu. Then again, don't most of these Japanese knife makers claim the exact same thing. Yamawaki Hamono was established in 1927 in Sakai, Japan and is a certified Sakai Wazashu. It is a certification by the Sakai Chamber of Commerce and Industry granted to excellent Sakai companies that preserve traditional techniques while at the same time employing new methods. There are only four cutleries in Sakai with this certification. The other three are Aoki Hamano, Kawamura Hamano and Fukui LTD. Yamawaki Hamano combines Sakai's centuries-long history of knife making techniques combined with modern metallurgy and modern technologies. Their Yoshihiro brand is one of the biggest in Sakai. Some of the well-known worksmiths working with them are Yoshikazu Tanaka, Kenkai Masakuni, Kenji Togashi, Yoshikazu Ikeda and Satoshi Nakagawa. Their new generation craftsmen Igarashi Nori and Masaya Shimizu lead the Yamawaki after having apprenticed under sake blacksmiths. Knives are very sharp because they are manufactured by traditional smith forging and excellent sharpening technique that have been passed down for 600 years. Enough with the talking about Yamawaki and the Yoshihiro brand, let's just see what's inside of these boxes. I like the very traditional magnolia wood handles with the black buffalo horn ferrules. Octagonal shape, very traditionally Japanese. I always like these handles. They feel like these are actually treated, so this wood is not completely untreated, which is nice. Let's go. Ooh. This definitely looks like hand chiseled kanji. Really beautiful and it gives me predator vibes. You know, that thing that the predator wears on his arm and you see all this alien kanji. Kind of makes me think of that. It's definitely, definitely really beautiful. It's definitely the first thing that catches my eye because, you know, the rest of the blade is really down to earth, really simple. The typical Gyuto profile. It looks like it has really nice fit and finish, the choil a little bit rounded, the spine not that much, just a little bit but you can kind of feel the edge though. The spine is pretty much straight, doesn't really has a taper but towards the tip it does taper down and becomes quite thin. The blade is straight, its geometry pretty thin. Looking really nice, really nice balance point, a little bit front heavy, very nimble knife, very light weight, yeah. Looks and feels like a legit Gyuto, yeah, yeah, nothing wrong with this blade. Now let's go to the Makiri. Same thing here. That beautiful hand chiseled kanji. It really nicely pops off these blades. 
This kanji is really nicely done, but very subtle, very visible still. Definitely looks like it's done by someone who did this before. Such a nice craftsmanship on its own. Doing that on a blade, I can imagine it could be a little bit nerve-wracking because the knife is already finished. You know, people have put so much time and effort into making these blades and then you are going to put your hammer and chisel on it. You better do it right the first time. <laughs> but boy, whoever did these kanji, he's a master. It looks so perfect, so clean and masterfully executed. And for me, it definitely adds so much value and aesthetics to a blade if you have that beautiful hand chiseled kanji on the blade. This Yoshihiro, Nakiri and Gyuto are handcrafted using Aogami Super Core Steel, which was heat treated to 64 HRC, so that's pretty darn hard and will definitely give you extraordinary edge retention. The Aogami Super at the core of the blade was squeezed into stainless steel, also known as the Warikoni method. The stainless steel Jigane, also steel cladding, is nicely polished and the grind is beautifully done on both knives. They are nice and thin behind the edge and have great geometry overall. I think these knives will have excellent cutting smoothness. And yeah, the fit and finish is not bad at all considering that these blades are, in my opinion, budget knives. At least I think just looking at these blades and judging how they feel in my hands, I would consider these ultra affordable knives. I think these knives are overall a great budget knife to have. I mean at this price point, looking at these knives, I personally would expect the price to be a little bit higher, just based on the looks, the geometry, beautiful kanji, the fit and finish overall on these knives. I think at this price point you get so much bang for your buck and I didn't even use these knives. And unfortunately I, I won't and can't use these knives, these are not my knives. Just based on the specs and the looks and the feel of these knives. Excellent knives, excellent knives. I think these would be amazing beginner knives for people who are just stepping into the wonderful world of Japanese knives and looking for their first quality Japanese blade, but don't want to break the bank. And if you don't really know how to take care of a knife yet, relatively easy to maintain. Yeah. Next time somebody will ask me what would be a great Japanese knife to start with, I think I won't say just buy a damn Dojiro. Their price point is really good for the knife that you get. That's why a lot of us knife nerds would tell somebody who asks which knife should I buy for my son that, that is going to culinary school or what would be a nice you know, knife for a home cook that doesn't want to break the bank. Just buy a damn Dojiro. But considering that these knives are completely made by hand. Knives underneath $200. The Nakiri is actually only $155. The Kyuto is about $175. Yeah, for that kind of money, I would definitely be happy with the knife that I get. For sure a very recommendable beginner knife, I think. Yoshihiro. I actually sold quite a few of my knives recently, making space for new knives in my collection. I made this pact with myself that I could never own more than 50 knives. One day it was actually, I can never own more than 30 knives. And then it went to, I can never own more than 40 knives. Right now I'm at the point where I'm saying I can't own more than 50 knives, which I think will be the number that I will never change anymore. Meaning that I am buying knives, I'm unboxing them, reviewing them, using them, sell them, so I have funds to buy new knives, unbox them, use them, review them, sell them, buy new knives, repeat. It keeps my collection evolving. That's for me the way to go. In the past two months I have sold more than 10 knives, but I also added six new knives to my collection. So I'm looking forward to make videos with my six new knives from the past two months. Those will be the videos that you can expect from me in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned for those. Like always, thank you for watching this video. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye folks.